Good morning, good morning, family of God. Welcome, welcome to the Morning Devo. We're back again for another session. Recognize the one who recognized us. Amen. The Lord Jesus. Amen. Let's worship the one who's worthy of all our worship, honor, and praise. Let's really dig into the Word of God, which is the living Word, and know that God is in us, working through us. He did it for us on the cross. He's doing things in us through His Holy Spirit. Amen. Um, and I recognize that. Amen. Let me get into position here. I'm all out of sorts this morning, but amen. We're here. So God bless you. I hope and pray that you had a wonderful, great weekend. Amen. This is the start of a new week and we're here. Amen. We're here. And I'm so honored and grateful um, to be able to do these morning devos and to have you with us. Amen. If this is your first time, don't think it's a mistake. You are here on purpose. I don't believe in coincidences for a lot of reasons, and I won't get into that right now. But I believe in divine appointments. I believe everything that happens in your life and in my life is ordered by God. Listen, good or bad. And people were like, but if you're a Christian, aren't good things always supposed to happen? Um, If you're a Christian, you know the answer to that. And the answer is no. Not because of God. It's because of of living in a fallen, broken world. We go through things. Amen. Last time I checked, when it's daytime and a new day starts, amen, we give God praise and honor. And we are glad that God created us a new day, right? When other people wake up that don't have God in their lives, don't believe in Jesus Christ, guess what? For them, it's a new day. Whether or not they're glad about it or not, it's up to them, right? Just like it's my choice to be glad and rejoice in the new day that God's made. So according to how I'm thinking, amen, we all have a new day. We could discover the things of God for this new day, or we could just continue to, you know, discuss things that are from like 20, 30 years ago, right? And live that way as well. So... Today, I want to talk about all who believe. And for now, we, we can't really discuss all who don't believe. Let's talk about all who believe on this morning, Devo, this morning. Amen. We all, we go, we're all going through things, but all who believe, um, God has a special word for all the believers right now, this morning. Good morning, Jose and Marixa Lebron. God bless you. Good morning. Welcome to the morning, Devo. It's good to have you. Amen. So listen, all who believe, we're going to be in John chapter 1, verses 12 and 13. To some, this might be a very simple message. To me, the gospel is simple, but it's complex at the same time. It's simple, but it's so powerful. The message of the gospel, Jesus, what he did, what he's doing, what he's coming coming back to do, amen. Um, Although we can see it in the scripture, and it seems simple, but it's so powerful, man. Sometimes you don't have to have an extravaganza or you don't have to have uh, spectacular events to happen to know that God is real in your life and in my life. But when he does show up in a spectacular way, when he does show up in your life and in my life, you know he's there and you know who he is. And it's not like random gods working in your life and working in my life. It's the God of the scriptures. People ask me, how do you know that the God of the scriptures is the true living God, the God of the Bible? I said, I don't know. Amen. But the word of God says so. I know what the word says. Amen. And I don't even know all what the word says. But the little that I do know, amen, God revealed himself in the form of a man named Jesus. And according to the scriptures, amen, and according to what Jesus says, And according to what the Apostle John wrote, right, it says all who believe um, get a special blessing. I don't want to spoil it. We're going to be in John chapter 1, verses 12 and 13. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or any prayer requests, don't hesitate to leave it here on this social media platform. 
from where you're listening or where you're watching. And also, you could go to live. That's so winners with a Z dot org. Guess what? So winners with a Z dot org is down for now. Amen. Because we're in the countdown 10 days before the relaunch of the new website. So I had to say goodbye to my. I feel bad. Like people, you know, gonna be like, it's only a website. No, I had that website for years and it's down right now. So I feel like. I'm missing something in my life. Is that is that serious in my life? But it's going to be up, Lord willing, 10 days, less than 10 days now. And, you know, let's do it. The relaunch, June 21st, from the time of this recording, 2023, June 21st, the first day of summer, from the time of this recording, we're relaunching the Celebrator Network, SoulWinnersWithAZ.org. But for now, it's down. So, uh... I had to make that decision because, you know, new things, right? Trusting God, having faith and moving forward and know that all who believe are going to be getting a special blessing. Amen. Uh, I'm just moving by faith and knowing that God got me. Amen. And God has you too. He could do wonderful, powerful things in your life. All you have to do, believe it or not, is have faith and trust in him. Not have faith and trust in faith. Not have faith and trust in a guru. Not have faith and trust in, you know, a leprechaun. We're talking about the almighty, all loving, all powerful, all forgiving, all merciful, all graceful, right? All truthful, right? Um, Omnipresent, you know, Jehovah Shammah, the God who is there in your situation, the God who is here in my situation. We're talking about that God of the scriptures. He got you. Amen. He got me too. So live that someone is with a Z, that ORG has always been... um, a place where I want you to go anyway to experience the full uh, morning Devo because it has a Bible, has its own live chat, you know. But I know for convenience, people just catch me on social media. Brother Frank, God bless you, God bless you. Good morning. Brother Sam, I do believe in a good morning blessing. So start the day off with again, hallelujah, amen. Yes, Uh, starting your day off with the Lord, amen, just sets the tone for your day. It sets your soul, right? In your life, and the direction you want to go, and the direction I want to go, and imagine all of who believe, all who believe, going in the same direction, knowing that God has us in the palm of His hands and moves us forward together. Together is always better. So thank you for coming through. Thank you for your comment, Sister Joanne. Good morning. God bless you. Welcome to the Morning Devo. It's good to see you. So let's get into it. We're gonna pray first. After we pray, we'll share this out. To as many people as possible, share the link live. That's so winners with a Z.org for those people that you know that are not on social media like that. And they'll find our YouTube page and all that stuff right there at live. That's so winners with a Z.org live streaming. Amen. And let's do it. We're 10 days away from this. Let me just put it on the screen. Amen. 10 days. Uh, 10 days away from the relaunch. Of the new radio network, so I'm, I'm excited, man. I'm I'm excited about that. So let's go for it. Amen. We'll pray after we pray. Like I said, we'll share this out. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or any prayer requests anytime during live, and even if I'm not live by the time you see this and watch this, and you have something on your heart, just share it on the live chat. Also, if you don't want stuff to be public and you don't want to share it live on the public platform. Whether you're listening on the podcast or you're watching on the video, amen, you can always go to live.someoneiswithaz.org, sign up. It's a one and done deal. It takes less than 40 seconds. A picture, your name, and your best email, and I'll get back to you from there as well. So, Father, I thank you, Lord Jesus, for this new date. I thank you, Lord God, that you have promised all who believe special blessings, special promises in the scriptures for all who believe. I pray, Lord God, that every single person that's watching and listening and hearing and listening, right, will really be blessed and will really know that your word is applied to their lives as well. Thank you, Lord God, that your will is your word and we can't separate the two. Your word is your will. Your will is your word. I thank you, Lord God, for your power, your love, your grace and your mercy. Thank you for Holy Spirit, God, living inside of every single all who believe all believers, all children of God. I thank you, Lord God, that you are with us, in us, and working through us. I pray a hedge of protection over all my family members, myself and my immediate family here, and my whole bloodline in the powerful name of Jesus. 
that you would give us health to our body, strength to our bones, that we will wake up with our sound mind, right? And we will continue to move forward in victory, knowing that you are the victorious one that we follow and that who we have our being and that who loves us first is that we can love others. And we travel this um, land and this place that we call earth, amen, knowing that we are pilgrims, knowing that we're foreigners in this land, that this is not our 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 eternal home, but we have an eternal home with you. And one day we will all see your glorious return. In Jesus' name, I pray this by faith. Amen and amen. So listen, let's go for it. Good morning, my jealous Leon Santiago. Good morning. Amen. God bless you as well. So let's share this out 60 seconds. When we come back, we'll get right into, well, let me get this ready. We'll get right into John chapter 1, verses 12 and 13. I'll be right back. Amen, amen, amen. So let's go for it. Um, again, for all the first timers, amen. Um, this is a morning Devo. We do this for like 25, 30 minutes. We get together um, Monday through Friday, Lord willing, if I could continue to do that. Um, sometimes I'm not on live. It could be for many reasons. Um, but the main reason is because I'm human. Sometimes I don't get up in time, amen. Or sometimes i um, just not going to say something if I don't have nothing. Amen. Um, sometimes, believe it or not, I don't have, let's say, a message to share, if that makes any sense. Like, I'll have something, but sometimes it's just personal for me. Amen. And God says, and you know what, that's for you. And he'll give me a decision to make whether I want to share what's personal for me and let the whole world in on it. And sometimes that's not wise, believe it or not. Um, sometimes we we know, for example, for like Joseph, when he had that dream and he showed, told his brothers about the dream. And if you know about the story of Joseph, you know what happened to him. But God was with him all through that. Amen. But let me go to John chapter 1, verses 12 and 13. Amen. Let me get it ready to put it on the screen before I start preaching about Joseph. Amen. Because um, he believed. Amen. And all who believe and get that blessing. I'm telling you, man. I challenge every single person right now who does not believe. Amen. I challenge you or I question you. Why don't you believe? There has to be a reason why you don't believe in this true, living, loving, holy, righteous God. It has to be a reason. Amen. But for all who believe, let's see what the word of God has for us right now. Amen. So let's go. All who believe, John chapter 1. Oops, and I forgot to, let me just do this. This really bothers to have this cursor around here. So let me take that off. All right. John 1, 12 and 13. Here it is. But to all who believed him and accepted him, Jesus, he gave the right to become children of God. You see that? You ever heard a person say, oh, man, we're all God's children? And, you know, I'm I'm not really confrontational, believe it or not. I don't like to argue. And when I hear people say that, I'm like, ooh. Oh, we're all God's children. We're all created in his image. I'm like, okay. Um, and, you know, I just think about 
what I'm gonna how I'm gonna respond. I don't know if they're asking me if that's true or they're telling me that's true. Um, nine out of ten times people tell me that's true. So what's the difference between you Christians and and me? We're all created in the image of God, so therefore we're all God's children. But to all who believed him, see that? That's why I highlighted believed him, and I highlighted accepted him. He, Jesus, gave the right to become children of God. It's right there in the scriptures, and I'm making it up. Verse 13, they are reborn, not with a physical birth resulting from human passion or plan, but a birth that comes from who? From God. So the only way all who believe receive this type of blessing and this revelation is when you believe and accept now the question is, how do you view God? Amen. We all see God through the scriptures, but the viewpoint might be a little different. My viewpoint of salvation in Jesus, right, and church is a little different than a person who grew up all their lives in a church, right? Um, my background is different than your background, right? Not all of us have exactly the same situation. We definitely don't have the same parents. We definitely don't have the same bank account. We definitely don't have the same um, DNA, right? We definitely don't have the same, you know, attitudes. So we're different. And God knows we're different. But he says to all who believe, believed, past tense, him, and accepted him. Amen. So in other words, whether you believed him for something in your life last year or you're believing in him for something today and you accept him, you'll have the right to become children of God. And once you know you have the right to become a child of God, you're reborn with a physical, not with a physical birth, but a birth that comes from God. In other words, we're reborn. A lot of people don't like this message because like, how could you get Reborn. What's this born again stuff? Because they don't understand all who believe, according to John chapter 1, verses 12 and 13, all who believe have the right to become children of God, and they are reborn, not with a physical birth resulting from human passion or plan, but a birth that comes from God. So salvation is deeper than what you might think. Salvation is deep. Salvation is an amazing blessing. Amen. An amazing blessing. Salvation is a type of thing, amen, that if you really understand it clearly and understand what God has done and what God has said and what God is saying right now, and you're a child of God, you'll be like, man, I want in on everything that God has for me. You don't want to leave nothing, you know, undone. You don't want to waste any time. There's a plan of salvation, amen. And I've I've done the plan of salvation um, several times on my morning devos and on the Blaze Baba study. If you haven't ever heard the plan of salvation, if you haven't ever saw the morning devo on it, amen, I suggest you go to my website, um, djsamrock.com forward slash podcast, and look for it in the search. Put plan of salvation, just put the keyword salvation, and everything that I know about being saved will pop up, amen. You have an opportunity to listen to that. And let me know what you think. The plan of salvation is a tremendous plan. It's the greatest plan that I've ever seen in my whole entire life. And guess what? All who believe get in on that plan. Why? Because we inherit. We become. We become children of the living God. That's an amazing thing. I don't know about you, but me knowing that I'm a child of God, not just because I'm created in his image, but because Jesus gives me the right to become a child of God, a son of God, uh, you know, a man of God, that right there is powerful. And nobody's going to take that away from me. Nobody can take it away from you either. If you're born again, live that way. Amen. Know that you're a new creation. You're not an old creation. You're a new creation in Christ. How do you view God? That's the first question. 
Do you view him as someone in the sky who's ready to beat you down every time you make a sin or a single mistake? Or do you view God as your heavenly father who loves you no matter what, right? Who forgives you when you ask him to, for forgiveness, who is with you at every, every day, everywhere you go? Some people view God as somebody who just, you know, created the whole world and left. Created everything that we see, everything that we don't see and left. Amen. Um, some people view God as, you know, you know, part of everything, that God is everything. He's a tree. He's an insect. You know, some people think that way. Some people don't even believe in him. So how, how do you view God? And according to how you view God will explain a lot of what's going on in your life right now. You know that? How you view God has a lot to do with what's going on in your life right now. You ever been through hard times? Right? I've been through hard times. And depending on how I viewed God through those hard times, amen, really made a difference. Before I had Jesus in my life, before he came and rescued me and touched my heart and transformed me and renewed me and restored me before all of that, my view of God was so off. I just thought, listen, God is only for people who went to church. I literally thought that. I said, God is only for the church. He's not for me. And I started to, you know, hear about the gospel as I was I was in into the Catholic religion. I started hearing about what Jesus did, and I always thought that He did that for everybody else except me. Everybody who went to church, everybody was a Catholic, everybody who you know believed in Him, that was for them. But for me, I used to always think that's not for me. He did that for them, not for me. I wasn't making the connection until I was thirty years old, ladies and gentlemen. Drunk and high in my first home in Allentown, Pennsylvania, where I had my recording studio, um, and I was done. I did everything the world offered, and I realized something about that. It was a lie. The promises that the world offered me was a lie. So I was frustrated. I was drunk and high, and I was like, okay, God, let's, let, let's, let's take this to the test. This is my testimony. I'm not saying for you to do this. This is my testimony. And I told God... To change me ASAP If he didn't change me by the time I woke up the next day From the time that I was Thought I was just speaking to the ceiling I'm going to keep it moving There is no God So my view on God Was someone who wasn't there Amen But guess what The next day He answered my cry And my prayer And he changed He touched me Changed my life for good That's my testimony People already heard that A hundred times but I'll say it a hundred more times because it's the true testimony of my life of how God met me where I was and he's taken me to where he is. So for all who believe, when he touches your heart, you believed in him, you accepted him. Amen. Salvation is believing and accepting. My second question will be, is salvation based on just believing? Oh, I just believe that. Is that, is, is that all you need for salvation to be evident in your life? Just believing? Or is it believing and accepting? Amen? Or how about this? Is salvation just having faith? Or is having faith and activating your faith in Him? Amen? We could take one step deeper into this plan of salvation. We could take one step deeper and knowing that all who believe are children of God... And you start taking more steps deeper and deeper because it's so good. God is so good. His plan is so good. His, his mercy is so good. Amen. His justice is real. His mercy is real. His plan is the best plan ever. Sister Joanne says, God is there for everyone, but you need to change yourself. Well, he's there for everybody. Amen. Um, and I believe what you're saying, change yourself. It means allow God to change you. Because, listen, um, thank you so much, Joanne, for your comment. Amen. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm just discussing this with you. People thought when I was sharing my testimony, um, there's a, in my old job, I used to work for this company, um, there was these guys, you know, most, most of management in that job space were, college grads or they were in college so they were 
the smart people, so-called, right? So I had shared my testimony with one of the managers, and they said, every time I would say a sentence, they would try to cut me off and complete what I'm going to say, as if to, if he's basically saying, oh, I heard this before. Now you're going to say this. And now you're going to say you was at your lowest part. And when you was at your... So he thought I was repeating a script or something, or that he heard it so many times, yet he did not believe it. So I noticed that. I said, why you keep on cutting me off? I'm sharing my testimony. Oh, because I heard this before. Now you're going to say that you was at your lowest point and that um, at your lowest point, then you called out to God, this, that, and the third. I said, okay, that's what happened in my life? He said, yeah, because basically you could have changed yourself. All you did, you were already a good guy, Sam. All you, had, all you did was enhance your goodness. And so you called on this imaginary created God, and now you're giving God the credit for your transformation when all along you were good. People think that way. So I told them and I started telling people from that day on because I didn't know people thought that way until one of my managers made me realize that because if one person believes that, that means a lot more people do, right? Believe the same thing. So I said, okay, if I could have changed myself to better my life, why wouldn't I have? If I could have changed my life on my own without Jesus changing my life, why didn't it? Why didn't I do it? And there was silence, and then he just walked away. He says, "Well, there's." He says, "Good luck in your life." Then it's okay. Listen, if I had known, if I had some internal being power already in me before Jesus, Amen. Before I had His Spirit in me, I would have. I would have went for it. Why not? Why? Why wouldn't anybody want to do a, a good thing in their own in their own lives? I know people have good days and they don't have God. I know that, but that's because of the grace of God. You ever met somebody who's a flat out atheist or doesn't believe, maybe agnostic who believes there's something out there, but just they don't think they can know who that someone is or something is, um, and they have great days. Money is good. Family is good. Praise God, right? The health is good. Um, sometimes they even have good, good, good attitude. It seems like they have a good spirit. I met tons of people like that. But then when you have the conversation, hey, you know, you, I do it like this. When I see a person that has great spirit, man, and the attitude is really cool and they're a pleasure to be around, right? Um, I said, man, um, Man, wait, how do you how do you you know remain so happy and so enthusiastic and so encouraging? And it'll come out whether or not they believe in Jesus or not. They'll probably say, "Oh yeah, um, you know, I read a self help book, and you know, or uh, I meditate, or um, you know, I, I practice Zen, or you know, whatever, you know, and whatever the case may be, you'll find out right away that they're getting." Their source of energy is from something outside of them. Not a lot of people will say, well, this is coming from inside of me, so it's coming out of me, whatever that it is. Amen? And then when you meet a Christian, a lot of times, at least in my experience, when they have that attitude, they'll tell you about some horrible times in their life that God has got them out of. So they have no choice other than to be happy and rejoice at the day they're living that day. They came out of some horrible situations and they know it was God that got them out of it or that God protected, right? I'm, I'm that way. I know it was God that protected me and guided me and got me to where I am now. Amen. So we have, to, we show that through our lives. But people who don't have God, who don't believe, they're not included in all who believe the promises. They're not a child of God. They can have good days and it could seem like they're living the best life. Amen. But what happens if any part of their life changes? How about the bank account or starts running out? How about their relationships start going, you know, buck wild? How about their health um, declines? Are they still going to be the same encouraging person or or the most, you know, is that going to be a good day for them? But when you have Christ, man, you can have the worst day of your life. So much could happen. So many things could happen to you. But when you have Christ, you're part of all who believe. 
you're a child of God. Realize that your father is not going to abandon you. He's not going to put you to shame. He's not going to leave you broke, busted, and disgusted. He's going to be with you even to the end of the age, whether it's a good day or a bad day. All who believe have the right to become a child of God. Not through natural things, but through supernatural things. Not through, not through natural childbearing or childbirth. No, we're reborn in Christ. Amen. And when you're in Christ, you have the sauce. You have everything you need to live this life out in godliness and in holiness and righteousness and in power, by, empowered by our Holy Spirit God. All who believed received this promise. John chapter 1, 12 and 13. That's where we're camping out. But I suggest you read John chapter 1, the whole chapter, and make that make that your your day, your declaration. And make that your confidence. Make that your understanding of who you are. Who's our daddy? Who's our father in heaven? Amen. Who's our guide? Who's our protector? Who's our comforter? Who is our counselor? Who's the almighty? Amen. Who's the prince of peace? Jesus. God. The Father. God. The Son. God. The Holy Spirit. Three in one. Don't ask me to explain um, that equation. Amen. That's a God equation. Three persons. So I hear it. I heard it like this. Explained. It's three what's. No, three who's and one what. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is the who's and what is those three? God. So I would explain. It's to me that's simple the way I think. Amen. But I know it's complex. The Trinity um, that you don't even see the word Trinity in the scriptures, but you see the Father, you see the Son, you see Holy Spirit God. And if you believe in first mentions, this is a quick, you know, Something for, to think about if you believe in first mentions. In other words, when the Bible mentions something first, I think I think that's in order. So if you look at the Old Covenant, the Old Testament, real quick, I'm, I'm out of time. Um, if you look at the mentions, you see Yahweh, Elohim, God, right? And then you see Ruach Elohim, which is the Spirit of God, Holy Spirit. And then later on, you'll learn about the Son. Um, so that's something for you to think about. But we have it. We have everything we need to live this life out. Amen. Um, David Huber, good morning. God bless you. Good morning. So listen, I'm out of time. Thank you so much for everybody that came to hang out with me. Hopefully you could replay this. Hopefully you go to John chapter 1 and read the whole thing. But we camped out on verses 12 and 13. I'm out of here. Pray. These are the 10 days, less than 10 days before we relaunch our website. I'm doing some testing. Um, Things are still really not to where it's supposed to be. So I'll be testing and testing and testing and low willing when we relaunch Soul Winners with Z.org, the Celebrator Network. It'll be a place where you could go to every day and find encouragement and find the word, find the morning Devo, find Bible studies, listen to some good music for your soul. Amen. And let's do this together. Keep me in prayer. I'll keep you in prayer. We are still short of our goal of what we need to completely launch this thing. Amen. I'm going to launch it by faith regardless whether the money's there or not, the finances are there or not. If you find it in your heart and you are blessed to be a blessing, djsandrock.com forward slash donate. Amen. Every single dime, every single penny is going to go to the efforts to expand um, the ministry by way of the gospel and spreading it out to as many people as I can, as we can together, um, the people who don't have never heard this message, believe it or not. Amen. Um, David, sorry I was late. God bless. You're never too late, brother. Amen. You could watch this on the replay as soon as I um, get off. So God bless you all. God keep you all. And remember this. Remember this. God is good. Peace. Have a great day.